now what happened in slow motion detail. You'll want to look first for what may have been a couple little vapor indications of flame. You can begin to see them shortly. This is about 60 seconds into the launch, if you will, and then the larger explosion. See the, what appears to be vapor flames at the base in the left-hand side of the screen. Now the main fuel tank begins to ignite and explode. As we wait for President Nixon, to President Reagan to address the American people, you will note in the right hand, upper right hand quarter of your screen, a, what appears to be an entire, almost entire, there it is, upper quarter of the screen, piece of what is believed to be the right solid rocket fuel booster. Now, when Leo Krupp was saying a few minutes ago, that those boosters are supposed to parachute into the sea and are possibly recoverable, you can see how that large a piece of debris, if it can be found, might indeed be very valuable in the investigation. Now, as we await, that's what happened this morning, both in real-time videotape and the slow-motion videotape, and as we await President... Um, we do tend to skirt it. And we just think that it's important. ...flight that something of this kind has happened, I certainly want everything in Option 41. servicemen from the Sinai a couple of months ago will remind us. Early bonds of earth and dance the skies on laughter silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace, where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent, lifting mind I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. In the wake of the explosion of the Space Shuttle Challenger at Cape Canaveral, Florida, this morning, shortly before noon Eastern Time. We take you now to the White House in Washington for a talk by the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd planned to speak to you tonight to report on the State of the Union. But the events of earlier today have led me to change those plans. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the Shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Nineteen years ago, almost to the day, we lost three astronauts in a terrible accident on the ground. But we've never lost an astronaut in flight. We've never had a tragedy like this. And perhaps we've forgotten the courage it took for the crew of the shuttle. But they, the Challenger 7, were aware of the dangers but overcame them and did their jobs brilliantly. We mourn seven heroes. Michael Smith, Dick Scobie, Judith Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and Krista Mikulov. We mourn their loss as a nation together. To the families of the seven, we cannot bear as you do the full impact of this tragedy. But we feel the loss, and we're thinking about you so very much. Your loved ones were daring and brave, and they had that special grace, that special spirit that says, give me a challenge, and I'll meet it with joy. They had a hunger to explore the universe and discover its truths. They wished to serve, and they did. They served all of us. We've grown used to wonders in this century. It's hard to dazzle us. But for 25 years, the United States space program has been doing just that. We've grown used to the idea of space, and perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. We're still pioneers. 
they, the members of the Challenger crew, were pioneers. And I want to say something to the school children of America who were watching the live coverage of the shuttle's takeoff. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. I've always had great faith in and respect for our space program, and what happened today does nothing to diminish it. We don't hide our space program. We don't keep secrets and cover things up. We do it all up front and in public. That's the way freedom is, and we wouldn't change it for a minute. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews, and yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Our hopes and our journeys continue. I want to add that I wish I could talk to every man and woman who works for NASA or who worked on this mission and tell them your dedication and professionalism have moved and impressed us for decades, and we know of your anguish. We share it. There's a coincidence today. On this day, 390 years ago, the great explorer Sir Francis Drake died aboard ship off the coast of Panama. In his lifetime, the great frontiers were the oceans, and a historian later said he lived by the sea, died on it, and was buried in it. Well, today, we can say of the Challenger crew, their dedication was, like Drake's, complete. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them, this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Thank you. Live from the White House in Washington, D.C., the President of the United States with a talk to the American people on this day when seven of their fellow Americans, several, seven individual and unique human beings, apparently perished in the fireball that became the Space Shuttle Challenger. A fireball engulfed the Space Shuttle Challenger and its seven-member crew a little more than a minute after takeoff. After 55 consecutive successful launches, disaster strikes America's manned space program. This is Newswatch. I'm Mary Alice Williams. I'm Lou Waters. I guess we always knew there would be a day like this. The words of Senator John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth. He probably spoke for many Americans earlier today when he reacted sadly to this morning's fiery destruction of the Space Shuttle Challenger. For details on what happened roughly 72 seconds after the Challenger lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center, a report now from CNN's Mike Cavanaugh. We have main it had become as routine as four, the delays, three, a shuttle on the two, launch pad. One, Countdown. And Blast off. Time Lewis and time again, the shuttle had gone off, leaving behind a stunning trail of smoke and fire. This time was different. This time, as eyes followed it on its way to the heavens, something went wrong. Three engines uh, running normally, three good fuel cells, three good APUs. Velocity 2,257 feet per second. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. At first it was thought it was just the booster rocket separating from the craft but a closer look showed it was indeed the entire space plane that had become a cloud of smoke. Mission Control said debris fell several miles in the Atlantic. Recovery forces sped to the rescue, but NASA conceded there was probably no human life to retrieve. The seven-member crew had waited since Sunday for this mission. 
among the astronauts, school teacher Krista McAuliffe from New Hampshire, specially picked and specially trained for the much envied ride into space. Her parents watched from the VIP site not far away. They hugged and sobbed. Anyone who watched was moved. Fifty-five manned space missions had made it without an in-flight disaster. The 56 was not so lucky. Mike Cavanaugh, CNN. In that VIP viewing area, three and a half miles from the launch site, there was a small army of well-wishers. Krista McAuliffe's sister was among them. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff, liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. The proud moment turned into one of stark horror as the giant fireball exploded miles above her. Fuel cells, trigger may be used. Challenger, go at throttle up. Challenger, go at throttle up. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Out. NASA officials still don't know what caused the shuttle to explode. At a news conference late this afternoon, NASA Associate Administrator Jesse Moore said any speculation on a cause is premature. I am aware and have seen the media is showing footage of a launch today from the NASA Select System. We will not speculate as to the specific cause of the explosion based on that footage. It will take all the data, careful review of that data, before we can draw any conclusions on this national tragedy. Moore denied there was any pressure to get the much-delayed shuttle launched today. Shock and sadness are the dominant emotions in Washington at this hour in the wake of today's shuttle tragedy. CNN's Charles Beerbar joins us now live at the White House with more on all of that. Charles. Before the president spoke to the nation, he did take one other action. He has sent Vice President Bush and NASA Director Bill Graham to Cape Canaveral with a dual mission. The mission of Vice President Bush to express the president's personal concern, the mission of Director Graham to find the cause, as the president put it, and then go forward. America's two senator astronauts, John Glenn and Jake Gard, are traveling with the vice president. When he did get to addressing the nation, an address which took place instead of the president's scheduled State of the Union address, the president said that this is a, a day for mourning and remembering. He said he and Mrs. Reagan were touched to the core, were deeply hurt by the occasion. He said that there was indeed a national loss that has been felt by the loss of the seven astronauts in the shuttle tragedy. The president's remarks, uh, taking place, as I say, instead of the State of the Union address, which has been set back to next Tuesday. At one point during the day, the president thought that he would go ahead with the State of the Union address, saying that these are things that must go ahead, that life must go on, particularly in the working the government. But White House officials say that uh, throughout the afternoon, the early part of the afternoon, there was a growing consensus among officials here at the White House and among congressional officials that all of the nation had been gripped by this particular event and that people were watching and experiencing the great tragedy and horror of the event and that it would not be appropriate at this particular time to talk of matters such as the State of the Union and what had been programmed as a fairly optimistic and glowing look forward that the president really needed to address the tragedy which has been shared by the nation. 
Uh, indeed, even in the original text of the State of the Union Address, there was a reference to the shuttle being up in space, and with it, that teacher in space, Krista McCullough. The president talked here as well about, uh, uh, about sending a teacher up. He had a special uh, message for children, uh, saying that they must understand some of the, the tragedy that is attendant with going off into uh, this kind of an adventure. Uh, when we talked with him earlier in the day, he also made reference to the fact that pioneers know that on the frontier there is always a risk and there is a hazard.